In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous as incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Samson is consecrated to the Lord from his mother's womb. The story of Samson's birth is similar to the gospel story of the Annunciation of the birth of John the Baptist, a prophet consecrated to the Lord's service. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now, then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink, and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son you will conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head, for this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God.
terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, You will be with child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord steered him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. My mouth shall be filled with grace, and declare. Be my rock and refuge, a strong foe to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. My mouth shall declare your praise. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Please stand. O root of Jesus' stem, Sign of God's love for all His people, come to save us without delay. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as a priest in his division stern before God, According to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children 
and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? I am old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Um, gusto ko lang po makasiguro na talagang mga tao ang kasama ko po dito sa loob ng simbahan. Pakitaas po ng kamay kung kayo'y totoong tao. Okay. May mga nagdududa. <laughs> Pakitaas ang kamay kung kayo'y nag-toothbrush. Oh. Maramay. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Pag hindi po nag-toothbrush, huwag na lang po magbubukas ng bibig. Pakiusap lang po yun. Mga kapatid, mayroon siyang isang kwento na kung saan alam naman ng pasyente na mayroon siyang sakit. Kaya lang, sabi ng doktor sa kanya, nung nag-meet sila, sabi ng doktor sa kanya, mayroon akong good news at bad news para sa iyo. Ang sabi ng pasyente is, Lord, um, Doc, gusto ko munang marinig yung good news. Ang sabi ng doktor, may tatlong araw na lang po kayo na natitira sa buhay niyo. Sabi ng pasyente, good news na yan, Dok. Ano pa ang bad news nung sabaw nung nagsimula? Mga kapatid, maaari nating itanong sa ating mga buhay, sa ating mga sarili, ano ba ang, karada, ang kadalas na naririnig natin sa buhay? Good news, bad news. Sino po madalas naririnig na lang bad news ng buhay? Pakitaas ang kamay. Ah, very good. Good news. Sino po nakakarinig ng good news? Wala din. So hindi sila hindi nila malaman kung ano ang dumarating na balita sa kanila mga buhay. Kung ito ba ay good news or bad news. Sa bagay kung minsan hindi mo ma-distinguish yung dalawa. Siguro ganun din yung experience ni Sekaraya. Sa tagal ng kanyang pinagdarasal, na sana magkaroon siya ng anak, nung gumating yung good news, hindi niya kaagad nakita. Sapagkat, sabi ko nga, siguro mahirap i-distinguish yung good news sa bad news. Sapagkat sa sobrang tagal nga naman pag-aantay mo, at siguro parati na lang feeling niya habang siya nagdarasal, ay negative yung answer ng Panginoon. The good news became the bad news. Kaya nga tinanong niya kaagad yung anghel, paano, mang, paano ko malalaman ito? Kahit sinabi ng anghel sa kanya that your, your prayers have been answered, narinig na yung dasal mo, sasagutin na yung dasal mo. And yet, Sekariah asked the question, How will I know this? Paano ko malalaman to? At sinasabi niya, matanda na ako. 
at yung asawa ko matanda na din. Sabagay, sabagay, kung kayo naman sa posisyon ni Sekaraya, makakita ka ba naman ng senior citizen na sa 60 years old at least na nagbubuntis? Magdududa ka din. Yung tinatawag mong lola, biglang nagbuntis. Baka ito nung isipin mo, ay, baka may tumor. Kaya nga siguro mga kapatid, the good news was not received immediately. At anong nangyari? Madalas sasabihin natin, what happened is a punishment coming from God. When Zechariah did not believe what the angel said, he was put into silence. Punishment siguro iyon for being un for unbelieving. But somehow, it is not a punishment from God. Sapagkat paano magiging punishment ang isang bagay na nagparealize kay Zechariah how gracious God is to his life. Hindi ba? Paano mo tatawagin na punishment ang isang bagay na nagpaparealize sa iyo kung gaano kaganda ang loob ng Diyos para sa iyo? Hindi ba pwede nating tawagin ito na biyaya? It is grace. Kaya nga siguro mga kapatid, we have also to realize this in our own life. Baka naman kasi nasasagot na ng Diyos yung dasal natin pero hindi natin makita. Baka nasasagutan ng Diyos yung gustong gusto natin pero sapagkat mas gusto natin ito sa pamamaraan na gusto natin kaya hindi natin makita. And sometimes baka yung akala mo, akala natin na punishment sa atin it is actually a blessing. Mahirap makita po yun. Lalong-lalo na kapag piling mo, nahihirapan ka. Lalong-lalo na kung piling mo, mahirap tanggapin yung kalooban ng Diyos para sa iyo. Because you will always look at it as a punishment. Pinaparusahan at ako ng Diyos kaya ang hirap ng buhay. Pinaparusahan siguro ako ng Diyos kaya napakadami kong problema. Pinaparusahan siguro ako ng Diyos sa pag, kaya ganito na lang ang dami nagkakasakit sa pamilya namin. Baka hindi naman. Probably and most likely it is not a punishment of God. Baka blessing. You know, mga kapatid, lumalaki, lumaki po ako para tinag-aaway yung parents ko. They're always quarreling. Kaya nga sabi ko nga po, munti ka na ako maging NPA. No permanent address. Kasi every time nag-aaway yung nanay ko, tatay ko, parati kaming lumalaya sa bahay. Kaya nga dumating sa punto na hindi na kami nag unpack ng maleta Kasi anytime, pwede kaming umalis. Kaya nga, yung memory ko ng childhood ko sa parents ko ay yung parating nag-aaway. They are always quarreling. Pero, nung nagkasakit si Papa, nung nasospital na si Papa, doon ko na-realize that the quarreling was part of making them love each other. Yung pag-aaway pala nila, that was the one that deepened their love for each other. Paano ko po nalaman? Nasa, nasa hospital bed si Papa at that time, nagsisimula na siyang maging unconscious. And the doctor already gave us the bad news na may cancer yung tatay ko. And, yung nanay ko, kailangan ko may inform. Nasa Bicol siya at that time, nasa Manila yung si Papa, kasi nga, we are looking for a second opinion there.
Pero kailangan ko na siyang ma-inform. Immediately, nung na-inform ko yung nanay ko, pumunta ng Manila. At diretsyong pumunta ng hospital. Sa hospital, sapagkat medyo late ko na pong na-inform at the day itself naman dumating yung nanay ko, sabi ko, umuwi ka muna doon sa tita ko, sabi ko sa nanay ko, sapagkat sabi ko, wala kang tutulugan dito sa hospital na komportable. At that time na naisip ko, ayaw kong po mag-alaga ng dalawang may sakit na magulang. Baka hindi kayanin ng nanay ko yung stress at yung, yung mismong circumstance na nandun siya na nakikita yung tatay ko. Kaya ang sabi ko, umuwi ka muna kay, Ma kay Mama Jane, doon sa tita ko noon. Doon ka muna mag sa tita. But my mother insisted to stay at the hospital. Sabi niya, hindi. I'll stay here. Say ko, ma, huwag matigas ulo. But she insisted. Biglang dumilat po ng mata yung tatay ko. Namulat. Umusog ng konti dun sa kama ng, ng bed niya. At ang sabi niya, dito na lang siya sa tabi ko. You know, that was the redeeming factor of my childhood memory. All the while, ang akala ko, pag nag sila, they don't love each other. Naiintindihan ko yun, arranged marriage po yung parents ko eh. Hindi nila gusto yung isa't isa siguro sa simula. In fact, parating sinasabi yun ng nanay ko na napilitan siyang pakasalan yung tatay ko. So my memory, kaya sila parating nag-aaway because they don't love each other. And yet, that hospital incident changed my mind. Yung pag-aaway pala nila, may good news din. It deepened their love for each other. Yun yung nagturo sa kalang to how to understand each other. All the while, ang nakikita ko lang ay yung pagsisigawan nilang dalawa at yung paglalayas ng nanay ko. Without realizing that there was love there. Kaya nga mga kapatid, siguro, in our own circumstances of life, meron din mga ganong incidents o pangyayari that we thought siguro ito'y parusa ng Diyos, bad news para sa akin. Pero baka hindi naman, baka nag-aantay lang ang Diyos na sagutin yung panalangin mo at the proper time. Timing, timing kasi yan eh. Ibinibigay ng Diyos ang panalangin natin at the proper time, at the right timing ng buhay natin. And when He answered that prayer, marirealize po natin yun. Kaya nga yung silence ni Zechariah was not a punishment. It was a blessing because it changed him. Binago si Zechariah Inantay niyang makita kung paano yung salita ng, nung salita ng anghel sa kanya ay magkakaroon ng katotohanan sa buhay niya. Nakita niya pa unti-unting nag unveil sa kanya yung kagandahan ng loob ng Diyos para sa kanya. And it happened when he learned how to be silent. Yung parusa naging blessing. And I think, most of the time, in our prayers, sino po ba nagsasalita? Tayo? Kapag tayo nagdarasan, most likely tayo nagsasalita. Ang daming words. And most of the time, these words are words of anxiety. Why not try to be silent in prayer? By not saying any word na wala kang sasabihin. And just wait for God to tell you what He, what he wants you to listen to. 
Subukan kaya po natin yun. At siguro, and most likely, you will realize that you are experiencing the same experience of Zechariah. May katotohanan pala na kumisan, what we thought to be a punishment is a blessing from God. And I hope and pray as we continue our celebration that we will be more keen and sensitive to the grace of God. Na sana po na bawat isa sa atin ay mag-develop ng gadong keen of sense to the grace of God. Ito po, parati na lang po itong tinatanong kapag may simbang gabi. Nakailan na po ba kayo? Sino po dito ang nakaapat na? Pakitaas ang kamay. Sabi po nung pari nag-celebrate kahapon, yung nasa likod ko. Sabi niya, ang daming tumataas doon ng kamay, baka marami ng disperado at disperada. Kasi sigurado daw may mga... May paniniwala yan na sasagutin sila ng Lord after nine days. Pero, mga kapatid, same pa rin ang invitation ko. Even after nine days, yung hinihingi nyo kay, sa, kay Lord ay hindi nasagot. Just think about Zechariah. Think about Him. Think about how probably the answer, the, uh, may the, the answer of God may be silence, and yet it can be a blessing to you. Think about it. Malaking bagay po iyo. Okay? Handa na ba kayo sa Pasko? Sino po dito nagtatago na sa kanila mga inaanak? Maraming umingiti. Siguro meron, meron, meron nga tayo siguro nagtatago na sa mga inaanak. Siguro para sa mga inaanak, pag nakita kayo good news, sa, kan, sa inyo naman ay naku bad news to. Pero at the same time, everything that we receive in life, as St. Paul says to the Thessalonians, in all circumstances of life, give thanks to the Lord. Learn how to give thanks Because you will never know that probably what you thought to be a punishment is a blessing itself. Amen. We now profess our faith. Ay, we, no, we now pray the prayers of the faithful. The Almighty Father's generosity is immeasurable. In due time, he will grant the aspiration of his people. With confidence, we implore him, Father, be gracious to us. Father, be gracious to us. That the church, your beloved people, imbued by the Holy Spirit, may attain the proper disposition for the birth of the Savior this Christmas. We pray. Father, be gracious to us that our government officials continue to uphold the dignity of every person, exhausting their means to promote peace and seek the well-being of their constituents. We pray, Father, be gracious to us, that parents may welcome children with love and responsibility and help them discover your will, O Father. We pray, Father, be gracious to us, that the Lord may bless married couples who, like Zechariah and Elizabeth, long for children to raise in love. We pray, Father, be gracious to us, that those who have gone ahead of us may find peace and eternal happiness, sharing in the joy of the Master's table. We pray, Father, be gracious to us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community our personal intentions, and for the intentions of this Mass. We pray, Father, be gracious to us. 
We also include in our prayers the intentions of the devotees and pilgrims of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag and the prayers of those people who commend their prayers to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, be gracious to us. Fill us with your Spirit, Lord, so that we may welcome our Savior with joy and gladness and may be true to you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altars, that what we bring despite our weakness may be sanctified by your power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we, he, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Fate. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep into hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co ears to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you, fair Son, Jesus Christ.
through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to His supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please sit down. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat na nakipagsalo sa misang ito, na wapo ang pagpapalan ng Diyos ay baunin nyo sa inyong pag-uwi. At hindi lang po ang kanyang pagpapala, ang kanyang kapayapaan, ang kanyang pagmamahal, at higit sa lahat ang kanyang awa. At na wapo ang lahat ng ito ay tunay pong makita at mapansin natin. Uulitin ko mga kapatid, sometimes what we think to be a punishment to us may be a blessing that the Lord is giving to us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your family always rejoice together, O God, over the mysteries of redemption they have celebrated, and grant its members the perseverance to attain the effects that flow from them. Amen. To Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Kayo naman po atin pong babasbasan ang lahat na may sakit. Pagkatapos po nito ang mga religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God, our mighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will greatly bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, 
may these rosaries, these images of our Lord and of our Lady and of the saints, candles, oil, and other religious articles, be blessed, be made holy, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.